Create React app is dead. Now what? Well, I'm not just making this as a bold statement, but the React docs speak for themselves. Create React app is a really loved tool and it allows you to bootstrap your React applications and it is dead simple to get started. But now, as per the new React docs, there is no mention of Create React app anymore. The React team is in fact now recommending frameworks to start a new React project. But I'm not sure if I agree. And here's why. Even though frameworks are quite powerful and provide us a lot out of the box, as a beginner React app, you still need to focus on learning plain React. And the landscape of React is complex enough that you don't want to overwhelm yourself with the magic of frameworks. So the real question is, how do you create a React app without a framework? Well, let's go to the source. You can definitely use React without the framework. But if you're new to React, using React without a framework is great for small applications. But for building full web apps, a framework is definitely recommended. And I couldn't agree more. Without one, you'll face challenges such as adding your own routing, managing different complex user scenarios, ensuring your app is performant, and a lot more. Now, React frameworks handle all this complexity for you, so you can focus on building React applications. Plus, you will also save additional time and effort if you use a framework instead of bootstrapping everything from scratch. And to conclude, they say that if we are still not convinced and we still want to use React without a framework, then we cannot stop you. Go for it. And they recommend to use Wheat or Parcel alongside React and React DOM to get started. So let's just go for it. Let's see what life looks like without a framework. So what exactly is Wheat? Wheat is a front-end tool for building front-end application. It is not just limited to React though. You can pick whatever you want with Wheat. For example, you can set up a vanilla, view, React, Preact, Lit, Svelte, Solid, Quick, and others with Wheat itself. But Wheat does two things really well. One, it serves code locally during development at a blazing fast speed. And second, it will bundle all your assets such as JavaScript, CSS, and all the other assets for production. Now, Wheat does provide with a lot of cool features such as all of these listed below. But the few I would love to focus on is Lightning Fast HMR. Now, HMR stands for Hot Module Replacement. Now, now, HMR allows you to update parts of the page without needing a full refresh. All you need to do is make changes in your code, save it, and immediately see the changes right away on your app at a blazingly fast speed. And HMR will take care of all of these updates for you. It also uses a module called Bundler, a pre-configured roll-up build with multi-page and library mode support. Now, Wheat uses Rollup for code bundling. Now, Rollup is a really good module bundler which compiles small pieces of code into something larger and more complex. Now, we will rate Wheat with based on three different categories. The first one is getting started, second, speed, and third, migration. So let's take a look at the code. And I'll also be sharing some pros and cons along the way. Now, you can easily use the command npm create wheat latest to basically bootstrap your wheat application. And the minute you hit enter, you can enter your wheat project name and select a framework based on whatever you want. So for example, you can use vanilla, Vue, React, React, and so on. But now, obviously, in this specific video, we will be focusing on React. Now, you could use TypeScript or JavaScript or or TypeScript with SWC, which stands for Speedy Web Compiler, which uses a Rust based platform to compile and bundle all your files. So that's what we will be picking in this specific demo. Now, here, let's just change our directory and open up VS Code. Now, now we can just use npm install to install all our packages. And then, once the install is done, then we can just use npm run dev to basically spin up our application. So, for example, if we do that, then we can just open this up in our browser and Wheat plus React code is ready to go. It's as easy as that. And they also give us a content example out of the box. Now, if we head over to Visual Studio Code, let's say we get rid of this entire logo for both Wheat and React. Then you can see that the logo is gone blazingly fast, which is pretty awesome. Now, Wheat also has something, a file called as Wheat Config that allows you to configure your application further. So Wheat has Wheat Config that uses the plugin ecosystem and it is all powered by Rollup. 
Now we have a plugin for React here, but you can add any plugins that you want and configure your read application. For example, these are all the different official plugins that you can use as part of read. And there are also some community plugins here that you can use as well based on your criteria. Now keep this in mind, this is something that you need to configure on your own versus in a framework, it's opinionated. So it's going to do all of that for you and you don't have to worry about all of these again. But if you want to do it without a framework, then this is the way to go. You need to configure the plugin as per your needs. The second one is speed. Speed is really important for Weed because Weed uses ES Build, which is an extremely fast bundler under the hood. Weed skips type checking and uses ES Build to compile all your code, which makes it super fast. Now, Weed uses ES Build underneath compared to Create React App, which essentially used Webpack. Weed skips type checking and uses ES Build to compile all your code. And as you can look, if we compare ES Build with all the others, then ES Build will bundle your code in 39 milliseconds compared to all the others such as Parcel, Rollup, and Webpack. So definitely Weed provides us a blazingly fast speed and is a clear choice here. Now, if you're enjoying this specific video, then now might be a good time to subscribe to my channel and like this video, just saying. Now, lastly, let's talk about migration. Let's say you want to migrate from a v your Weed application. So you get started with plain React with Weed, and then now you're ready to use a framework of your choice. Then you can migrate from Weed to other frameworks. Now, one popular framework that I'm going to focus on is Next.js, but you could do the same pretty much in all the others as well. Now, one of the powerful things that framework provide us is server-side rendering. Now, it comes out of the box. You don't have to pre-configure anything. But with Weed specifically, if you want to configure server-side rendering, then you can follow this documentation and it is pretty comprehensive. So you need to set up your files, then add this conditional logic to switch to SSR versus client during build time, set up the dev server, and lastly, build for production. Now, I have to say that this definitely feels quite overwhelming. Because with, if you use a framework like Next.js, then you don't have to do this anymore. It comes out of the box, so you can get started right away. But let's say you want to you wanna have the control and you want to pick and choose exactly everything that goes in your application versus open-ended frameworks like Next.js. Then in that case, you can use a plugin called as Wyke. Now, Wyke gives you routing, server-side rendering, and all of that that a framework provides us. But the advantage of Wyke is that you will have full control over the server and you can use any deployment strategy as you like. And Wyke is completely agnostic of React or any other library. So it has zero dependencies on React. So you can use any other UI library or framework of your choice as well. If you use Next.js, then it's harder not to use Vercel. But if you don't want to be tied to any specific platform, then you can definitely go for Wyke with Weed as a viable option because you do get a lot. But remember, if you want to add routing or any of the things, then you can configure your plugin section with Wyke SSR. Now, Wyke was previously known as Weed Plugin SSR, but it has been renamed to Wyke recently. So when you're scaffolding your latest app, you can use just Wyke to install your application and then accordingly pick if you want to use React, React.ts, and so on. And if you want to add client routing as well as server routing, then they have really good documentation for that as well. Now let me know in the comments if you want me to dive into Wyke and how you can set up Weed and Wyke together, basically power everything that a framework provides us. But like I said, the migration is quite simple. Take a look at the architecture and see what are the differences between what a framework provides us versus what Wyke would. They have a really good documentation on Next.js comparison as well. And you can go through that as well. Now with Wyke, you get to plug and play all the different features in your application uh, versus with a framework like Next.js or any other frameworks, they are quite open-ended. So you have to use what they provide you out of the box, which is again, easier for decision-making because they power a lot for you and make all the decisions for you. But if you want to have more control in your team and your company that you're working for, Depending on your application, then you can use something like Wyke. So these are some of my thoughts after using Wyke and comparing that to a framework like Next.js and using Weed in general. Now, 
Veet definitely prioritizes on its own single page applications. You have to use plugins to basically power up things like SSR, which are very popular in modern day frameworks. After I did get used to using a framework like Next.js or Remix and others, then adding SSR and routing to my application and doing all the thinking definitely felt overwhelming. It definitely felt like a step back. Overall, we does encourage developers to learn React. Focus on that without having the distraction of using a framework. So I still recommend using Weed if you want to get started with React and you don't want to use a framework or if you're in a team, then you can basically plug and play and do something like Wyke to basically pick the Lego pieces you like and plug them together. But I'm quite happy that solutions like Weed exist today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would love to know what you think about using Weed and Wyke together in your React application or if you still prefer using a framework like Next.js, Remix and so on to make all the decisions for you. I would love to know in the comments below. Now as next steps, if you want to become a front-end developer or aren't sure how to get started or if you are an existing one and you want to figure out the missing gaps in your skill set, then you should check out this specific video that will teach you and give you a front-end developer roadmap for this specific year so you can know everything that you need to know to become a successful front-end developer. Else, you can watch this other video to learn more about the front-end ecosystem. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.